Hello and welcome to yet another video. Today we will have a closer look into issued currencies slash tokens. So as you know there are for example on the Ethereum blockchain tokens so usually they are following the standard called the USC20 standard which are a smart contract. So we might have heard of that for example USDT that is an USC20 token in, in parentheses a smart contract. Uh, it's a little bit different on the XRP Ledger because as you know the XRP Ledger if we debate about uh, being uh, having smart contracting capabilities it does support things which would be for example on the Ethereum blockchain a smart contract natively. For example the decentralized exchange something similar to Uniswap or Pancake Swap uh, 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 also exists on the XRP Ledger. Uh, but Uniswap and PancakeSwap on the Ethereum blockchain are a smart contract again, but on the XRP Ledger it's, the code is Im embedded natively. And that's the difference. And also regarding multi-sign, so the XRP Ledger is also able to do multi-sign and is also supported natively. The XRP Ledger, like I said, supports issues currencies and they are also supported natively with no additional code uh, needed. And yeah, so it's not possible currently or yet uh, to uh, implement custom smart logic yet on the XRP Ledger. So it's not possible, for example, to program a smart contract in Solidity on the XRP Ledger. But something will come soon called the Hooks Amendment. So in the next whatever months, uh, this will be released. So currently it's running on its own testnet. So there's the Hooks testnet. So I might make a follow-up video about that. Um, so I think it's, yeah, here they're also mentioning it here. Regarding, um, oh, where, so oh, it was down there. Um, right, in development, so the smart contracts, uh, they have the hooks amendment and they're currently in development. And also regarding NFTs, there's still some work to do. They have to, um, well, they have to find a standard how to implement or um, smart, co uh, well, NFTs on the XFL Ledger. So the, there is currently a debate, should they create uh, own NFT objects, should they just use issued currencies and so on. And also something we've heard about side trends. Well, let's go back to tokens. So about, uh, well, tokens slash issued currencies. So the idea behind issued currencies is that anybody can issue his own currency. For example, I could say, okay, I want to issue the test token or, or for example, GateTub says, okay, I'm going to issue a US dollar token, so USD and so on. And they are the issuer, meaning that they, they can choose. Okay, so there's also you can set change the settings so the issue can say that it wants to to keep the privilege of uh, creating more of cr the set currency or the issue can also set it that he can't create more of it so he, he can even uh, well remove the ability from himself and yeah so issued currencies like I said are being created by a party uh, I also made a video how we can do that if you just go to some.community some there is a tool uh, for so under XPL tokens and just click on create new token and can you then you can create your own token and you should in order that other people can use that they have to set a so-called trust line so wh what is the purpose of that uh, basically the person setting the trust line says it trusts or it trusts the person or the issuer who is creating a trust in two that the other person makes good on its promise for example if there is gate up as issuer for example, if there, so it will go to example tokens and there is a list of all tokens. We can see, for example, that GitHub has a GitHub fifth Bitcoin. So one fifth of Bitcoin, they're issuing a tokenized version. And we can, we can see that they issued 593 Bitcoin already. And all the people who have now the uh, issued currency on the, in their wallet. So uh, they are trusting that, that GateUp will, if if they want to, give them also Bitcoin. So you can send the GateUp fifth Bitcoin IOU to GateUp, and then you can also request the on-chain transaction. But if you send it around and if you trade it, it's easier if you have it in a tokenized version. So it's just more movable. It's very cheap to transfer, and you can also cha sw easily switch ownership. For example, if you have a trust line to GateUp fifth Bitcoin, I have GateUp fifth Bitcoin, and then I can send you my GateUp fifth Bitcoin to you uh, without any problems. So and the trusting setting where we did that quite often. So I'm just gonna quickly enter here. A, I'm just creating a test account right now. 
you can see uh, setting a trust is super easy. You just click on add asset and add the assets, for example. So this is right now Bitcoin testing. But yeah, so like that, you can set a trust line. And now I'm able to send and receive um, the Bitcoin I use. So in user, usually in parentheses is the issuer. And in this case, we've got Gator with issuer. Um, we've got, for example, with Casino Coin, with CC, it's Casino Coin issuer, and so on. You can see the number of trust lines and all issued currencies, so all tokens, can be traded on the DEX, so on decentralized exchange, so in this part here. So on the on the testnet, there is not enough liquidity to trade uh, trade that. But if people would add more liquidity to all of that, then that would work. So I'm right now just submitting. If I add limit sell orders, it should work. Okay, great. So, uh, but it, there, there needs to be more liquidity in order to um, to buy and sell orders on the decks here. And right, that's how these tokens work. Um, one thing we have to add here. So, like I said, when you uh, when you are dealing with an issued currency, you are trusting the other party. There are also issued currencies which are issued in a trustless manner. So I think the Ori stablecoin should be, is intended to be like that. So I didn't look it that closely into it, so I might be wrong here. But it's also possible to issue currencies in a trustless manner. So, so it depends. So sometimes you're entrusting a single party to make good on a promise, and sometimes it's even possible to set it up that they're issued uh, in a trustless manner so that you don't even, like I said, have to trust the party because the code is making sure that there will be always enough reserves and all of that. But for example, if I trade, uh, like I said, XOP to Euro, so to token as zeros by GateUp, then I have to trust that GateUp will pay me this zero if I send it to the website and then make a request for a wire transfer to my bank account. So that works, I already tried that as well. Um, right, so one thing we will add is also possible, for example, the issuer is able to freeze it, so freeze the tokens, uh, but they are issued currencies, so the, the, only that. So XRP can never be frozen, it's very important again, uh, because there is a possibility that the issuer can freeze one token or all tokens, uh, but this is just in regards of further activity and stuff like that, but it's, 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 it's an issued currency, so... Uh, I'm just, uh, and it's also possible um, to de deactivate that. So there's there's a no freeze flag, so the the issuer can give up the ability, so that he can not uh, freeze accounts anymore. That's also uh, a possibility. But I'm just wanted to mention it here. Um, right. So it's possible to that the issuer can see here. So the most important part: XRP cannot be frozen by any entity or individual. As we know, it's the native asset on the XRP ledger. But issued currencies, they have the functionality for, in, uh, like for example, euro to be frozen or a global freeze. But there's also a possibility that the issuer can give up his ability with a no freeze command that he can never again freeze anything. That's also a possibility. So we would have to look it up what it, what the case is for each token. And right, so I also made recently a video about all the tokenist assets on the Exit Ledger. So we know that there is Bitcoin, US dollars on the Exit Ledger, Ethereum is issued, Euros. Uh, there's also, you can see here, uh, Chinese Yuan are issued on Exit Ledger, Casino Coin, uh, Bitcoin Cash, US dollars, and so on. And I also made just yesterday a video about um, the tokenist gold being issued. Um, we can also look it up as XAU, right? And we can also see by BPG Covine is also issued, and that already 3,700 people are using that. So they issued 4.2 kilograms of gold on Exit Pledger. So not that much yet. So you can see here there will be more liquidity and more people will be using it, hopefully. Um, but right, that's how all of that works. I hope I explained issue currency is now in more detail and I hope you understood it. Like I said, I made a video how you can create your own uh, issued currency, then you can also try it. Um, you can do it here and I would also recommend just trying it on a testnet because it's super easy. Like like I said, you can just go to the testnet and go to next and uh, check all of that here quickly. Then we can say just testnet. And then we're doing, for example, whatever, I'm just going to call it test. Then can say you want, for example, 1,000 test tokens. And then we'd have to do all the sign-ins and stuff like that. But like I said, I made a video about it. You can watch it if you're interested how you can do that. And right, so that's basically it. I will also link the website, the sites again, because there's, there's much more to know about 
um, issued currencies because, for example, you can also trade any issued currency to any other issued currency with pathfinding because, for example, for example, there is not enough liquidity for one trading pair for Euro to Casino Coin and you can try to find a suitable path, for example, and it first goes from Euro to XOP and then from XOP to uh, Casino Coin or maybe also from Euro to whatever Ethereum and then from Ethereum to Casino Coin. So it tries to find the best route with the lowest fees and the best conditions. And this is a great feature called auto bridging. And right, so you can see that there is there are right. So I also think I mentioned it. Yeah, I made a video about the pathfinding X app. So like I said, I will link all of that here. You can also have a closer look how all of it works. But I uh, try to explain the general concept of issued currencies. And that's it that far. So thanks for watching and see you in the next video.